Nice to Run South. Uh, these are five songs that were recorded for a demo that was never released in the summer of 2001. Um, we've been rehearsing in the Beamer Box Company studio on Duke Street in Kitchener, Ontario, with Steve Toms playing bass, Paul McInnes, myself, and a fellow named Dean Smith, who's from the Miniatures. Paul and I have been playing a duo act for a while, uh, I guess almost a year, and had done a few tours, and John McAuliffe, who was kind of a scenester, hipster manager character, was interested in seeing a larger sound to try to approach record and radio with for distribution. And so we started working with Steve and Ian, um, two guys who've both been in the band, the, uh, the KW Town Saves, the Miniatures. So we had a bunch of rehearsals at the Beamer Box Company, where the album name comes from. Uh, it's this old, crotchety building that they used to store cardboard containers in, and to offset the cost, they threw up a few walls around the outside where there were windows. Had studio space set up, and it was overlooking the rail tracks, and we would have parties, play late into the night. There's a few guys who, I don't know if they still live there, or they were living there when we were there, and they, uh, we'd keep them and the pigeons all awake. Um, sometimes at night you'd get up on the roof, and you could look out over the downtown of Kitchener, and uh, that was a pretty neat, pretty neat time in the summer. In the winter, the water pipes that heated the building would get so hot, we had to keep the windows cracked open, and all the snow would fly in and then melt immediately just on the, the fringes of the window. And always there'd be pigeons trying to sneak themselves through the opening. It was neat. Uh, the band name was never really determined when we were together. We only ever played, I think, four or five shows at most. So I just picked it for this release out of a handful of sketches from one of my journals. Originally, we went into the studio with eight songs, and ended up getting paired down to the five here. And they were mostly tracked live with overdubs, having later vocals and Ian on guitar. And I think we did the whole thing over a three-day period. The idea of the album was to take these songs that were written acoustically and build them into occupying a larger amount of space. I remember I had split early from Nelson, Nelson's place, and uh, so the bulk of the mixing was finished with Paul, Ian, and John. End of message. To reply to it, press 8. To send a copy to someone else with your remarks, press 6. To erase this message, press 7. To save it, press... Message skipped. Next message. Okay, we'll start from here. I remember having to put on early, because the, uh, and the bulk of the mixing was finished with Paul, Stevie, and John. Uh, the reason this was never released was partly funny at the time. It was tight. And partly because the song presentation. We were just talking about it, and they felt too weird compared to the other stuff. It's kind of pitchy, and... What I liked about it anyway is the guitars were kind of on the edge of out of tune and the voice was squawky. Anyway, so we just opted to rack that experience and floated some through the internet, but there was enough people asking for a, a presentation and an album, so it made sense to do this as a limited release sort of thing. The song Accident Car is the last, and it's drawn from a night of drinking at the now defunct Fox and Peasant Pub on University Avenue. Uh, I used to go there and watch Pete Arbor and Chuck Baker who were in this band called White Courtesy Phone. They were just amazing. They did their own stuff, and they were fun to watch. Peter was like, <laughs> what it will. That's probably not appropriate. Anyways, we, uh, <laughs> they used to host this open mic night, and then we would tell us to get up and sing. And I remember when I was singing once, nobody was listening. It was great. We were watching an ambulance drive by, and they had these frosted pub windows, so it splintered the light all over the room. It looked like a Christmas tree. I just thought how strange it was to have a job where you drive around in a car following accidents. And then there's a version that we did live that was on the web for a while that had this new young breakdown. That was like the talking and bars thing that floated around the web where I was telling people to at the back to shut up and listen. I'm thinking I should get some material because that seems to be a constant. Uh, driving is a song about being 17 and getting the car. My parents used to let me drive this big old Parisian, this white beast bought from my Uncle Dale, and I'd take it out with my friends or by myself and listen to mixed tapes with the Violent Fountains and Elvis Costello and this weird California folk singer-songwriter stuff that I have since lost and misplaced the tapes. Uh, the chorus line from that comes from, uh, it's like a self-help novella line, Our Weaknesses Maybe Our Beauty Too, which I think everyone's experienced once or twice. Uh, Dear All, this is just this pitchy song. I remember rehearsing it this one time where we'd run out of beer. And Ian Smith, always a Renaissance man, after we uh, 
We combed the space for beer. He uh, managed to pull a bottle of Axe out of his gig case. And we all like, watched him drink it. So I think that's really where the band morale started to break down, was at that point with the beer. Anyways, February, Saint February, I was about listening to uh, Ray Static's song, Shaved Head, while driving to King's Den once. Ian's guitar on it, it's really, really great. He uses some little loopy stuff on the line six. And Paul and Steve kind of had this neat on the edge of it percussion thing, rhythm thing that I really, really like. I think that's probably my favorite song on the album. It's kind of this this rhythmic weirdo thing that I, I really dig. Uh, the song Dumbest was it was just an attempt to write some poppy poppy and upbeat for a four piece. Uh, the garbled the lyrics are kind of garbled uh, as they were being written in the studio and and I really think it's funny that there's a reference to different strokes in it. Makes it a bit of a gem. But the uh, the jury is probably still out. Paul and I played it a bunch. It seemed to work well as a duo thing. The roots of it were from this gig at Acadia. We played a Halloween show and we uh, we just didn't know enough songs. So we started making stuff up on stage. And that uh, progression and some of the lines stuck around. So I don't know. I'd like to thank throw a thank you out to some of the following people who. Uh, who are kind of on the fan or booking end of it. Uh, Mike Johnson from Thunder Bay, Mark Schuldeis, Sam Worthington, Amy Campbell from Battle Axe Folk, and all the Battle Axe Folk people in Halifax, Adam McIsaac for the Living Room Show in Montreal, uh, Craig Taylor, Alice Molotian, uh, Rock and Ray for the, uh, the emails and the radio stuff, Lisa and her housemates from Queens, uh, Sandra and everybody who, uh, who welcomed us to Wolfville, Rose, Rosa Cousins from Halifax for the show and her help. Uh, Justin Suds from the UBC and anyone else I might have missed. Uh, Mike Johnson has a pretty funny story about laying down in the snow to try to sell tickets up in Thunder Bay. He was threatening to give himself frostbite unless he sold 100 tickets. So that's the kind of dedication that we uh, we like to see in people that we get to work with. For more information on shows and albums like this, just visit the website. CraigCardiff.com. And uh, thanks a lot for supporting independent music by buying it. Uh, download it and distribute it often, but buy it if you. End of message.